Okay, take two, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, I don't have anything off the top today, uh, so Myra, if you want to start us off. Um, okay, but, uh, thanks. So I want to ask a little bit about yesterday's uh, events. We have a White House statement that basically says we haven't seen anything that would make us doubt what the polls are saying. Uh, but we have Zelensky saying he has no doubt that it wasn't a Ukrainian air defense missile. Why such a big discrepancy? So, uh, Umaira, I would uh, echo what our colleagues um, from the National Security Council said, which is that we have full confidence in the Polish government's investigation of the explosion near their border with Ukraine. Uh, and we commend them for the professional and deliberate manner in which they are conducting it. Uh, and as uh, the NSC said, we have seen nothing that contradicts President Duda's preliminary assessment uh, that this explosion was likely the result of a Ukrainian air defense missile that unfortunately landed uh, in Poland. Uh, as it relates to President Zelensky's comments, we've, we've seen those, we're aware of his comments, uh, and we're going to continue to convey information to our Ukrainian partners uh, as the facts on the ground uh, and more information comes to light. But like I said, uh, we don't have any information to contradict Poland's uh, preliminary finding. Right. So Secretary yesterday had a call with his Ukrainian counterpart. Um, was there any pushback there from him um, saying that, like, we think this is coming, this is rough and fired? What was that conversation like? I'm asking because today we have this massive... Sure, sure. So Secretary Blinken spoke with Foreign Minister Kuleva last night, and uh, the crux of that call was to uh, continue to uh, show our support to the Ukrainian people, but also uh, exchange information. Uh, as part of these ongoing uh, engagements with our partners, uh, Secretary Blinken also spoke with Foreign Minister Rao of Poland. Uh, President Biden had the opportunity to speak with uh, President Duda, and President Zelensky also uh, had been in touch with President Duda to clarify facts as well. Um, to widen the aperture here a little bit, Himero, I think one important thing to be very mindful is that uh, wherever the final conclusions may land, uh, it, is, it is clear that uh, ultimately, the party responsible for this tragic incident is Russia. Uh, we are having this conversation uh, because of Russia's unjust and unbar and its, its barbaric uh, assault on Ukrainian uh, territorial integrity and sovereignty. And specifically, uh, we're having today's conversation because Russia launched a barrage of uh, missiles on Ukraine specifically targeted towards uh, civilian and energy infrastructure. Um, and so, like I said, we're continuing to engage with our Polish partners uh, and our uh, allies in the region. Uh, but again, we've not seen anything to contradict what uh, President Duda has been saying. But are you guys a little bit surprised or confused by what, what's coming out of Ukraine and Zelensky? Again, uh, we're aware of President Zelensky's uh, comments, and we're going to continue to convey information uh, to our Ukrainian partners, uh, but we do not have any information that would contradict Poland's preliminary findings. And just one last thing on this. When Secretary was speaking with um, his Ukrainian and Polish counterpart yesterday, was there any urge of uh, calm and more measured public statements in any of those calls? Because the initial uh, sentiment right after this happened, obviously nobody knew anything, but was was panic. So was there any um, urging from Secretary Blinken that like you know, to take the temperature down? I, I, I'm not going to get into uh, specifics uh, of the conversations beyond what we uh, re read out, but I think you've seen uh, across the interagency uh, us speak in unison about the the need to get to the bottom of the facts and to a need to get uh, all the information out there. Uh, and that's uh, what I indicated to you all yesterday when you when you asked about this. And I would reiterate again that uh, uh, we don't want to get ahead of the work uh, that is taking place, the investigation, and we remain in close touch with our Polish counterparts. Um, but we have seen nothing to contradict uh, what President uh, Duda's preliminary assessment was. Jenny. 
Have there been any conversations with Russian officials in the wake of this missile attack? Uh, General Milley said he was unable to get in contact with his Russian counterparts. So has anyone from this building been able to get in contact with him? I don't have any specific conversations to read out that's with Russian that officials. That you're seeking out at all to have a conversation around this? Uh, I think uh, the, the 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 broader concern here, Jenny, is is like I said, is that we are having this conversation uh, in in light because. Uh, Russia decided to unleash a barrage of mi missiles uh, on Ukrainian territory with the uh, direct intent to target civilian infrastructure. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to continue to support our Ukrainian partners as they defend their territorial integrity and their sovereignty. And as it, uh, as it uh, relates to the uh, events in Poland yesterday, uh, we're going to continue to engage with our, our, our Polish partners. As uh, the president said uh, yesterday uh, in Asia, you know, we've agreed uh, to offer support uh, throughout this whole process, and we're going to continue to do that and remain in close touch with our Polish counterparts. One more, Milley also said he sees there could be potentially a political uh, solution environment between Russia and Ukraine right now to discuss diplomacy. Does the U.S. State Department agree with that assessment? Well, you, you've seen even President Zelensky uh, speak about the need for uh, this conflict to resolve uh, through diplomacy and through uh, negotiations and discussions, but we have not seen uh, any kind of concerted effort from the Russian Federation to do so. And so the part that we're going to play is that we're going to continue to support our Ukrainian partners through security assistance, through humanitarian assistance, uh, and we're going to continue to hold uh, uh, the Russian Federation accountable for its actions. We've done so through sanctions and export controls uh, and other measures as well. Alex. Next, I want to go back to your exchange with Mera. Uh, you said we have nothing to contradict President Duda's comments. Is there any particular quote or comment that you're referring to? I just want to make sure we are on the same page here. Sure. So uh, you saw clearly uh, President Duda uh, offered a preliminary assessment that this explosion was most likely the result of a Ukrainian air defense missile that unfortunately <laughs> was landed in Poland. And uh, what I was uh, offering to Humaira is that we have seen nothing that contradicts uh, those preliminary assessments. But you also have nothing to contradict what President Zelensky said, right? He said, I have no doubt that I was, it was not our rocket. Uh, Alex, uh, we have seen President Zelensky's comments, uh, and we are continuing to engage with our Ukrainian partners and convey information to them. Uh, that was in large part of the crux of Secretary Blinken's uh, call with Foreign Minister Kuleba yesterday, is to uh, uh, convey information and to have have that discussion. Uh, but as I said before, we uh, do not have any information to contradict Poland's preliminary findings here. We have this, two, this situation, like two contradicting statements from two neighboring countries. It doesn't look good. I mean, it does create an impression that some side, in this case the West, is being part of the cover up. Can you just explicitly say that we are not or not going to act at any point be part of any cover up in this case? Uh, uh, Alex, I think uh, you're trying to um, uh, categorize something that's that's uh, that's not there. Um, I will let uh, President Zelensky uh, and our Themselves. We've seen those comments and we continue to engage with them uh, and directly uh, as it relates to conveying information uh, and offering information and facts as we uh, are as those come to light in conjunction with our, our, our Polish partners. But again, we have not seen anything to contradict uh, President Duda's preliminary assessment on this, which was that this explosion was most likely caused by uh, the result of a Ukrainian air defense missile uh, that unfortunately landed in Poland. Uh, but again, I would be remiss not to, uh, again, reiterate that we are having this conversation uh, because uh, on uh, back in February, Russia decided to unjustly and illegally uh, invade Ukrainian uh, territory and uh, uh, assault Ukrainian sovereignty. Uh, sovereignty. Ukraine has every right uh, to defend itself. And specifically in the actions of this week, we're talking about this because Russia decided to unleash a barrage of missiles on Ukraine, uh, directly targeting uh, civilian and energy infrastructure. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, Iran continues taking children, 43 of them based on New York Times. When does the U.S. plan to request the U.N. Human Rights Council convene to condemn Iran's actions, especially children, and killing of more than 300 
demonstrators? So uh, a couple of things. First and foremost, we uh, continue to be deeply concerned about the reports of mass arrests and sham trials uh, and now death sentences uh, for protesters. Uh, for over two months since these protests have began, uh, security authorities have killed hundreds of peaceful protesters who are outraged, uh, uh, as, as we are outraged, by the death of Masa Amini. Uh, many of these have been women and girls. Uh, and the bravery of Iran's women uh, and girls are, are continue to be the face of these protests. Uh, and the violent crackdown and their resilience uh, is an inspiration to the world. Uh, specifically on uh, the UN, on uh, later this month, on November 24th, the UN Human Rights Council will hold uh, an urgently warranted special session to address the worsening human rights condition uh, in Iran, especially as it relates to women, girls, and children. Uh, the U.S. strongly supports this call for a special session, which was uh, requested by our German partners and our partners in Iceland. Uh, and the world is watching in horror as the Iranian regime continues to violently crack down on peaceful protesters uh, by its citizens. Uh, I will echo what Secretary Blinken said in September, which is that the Iranian government needs to end its state-sponsored violence against women and to allow peaceful protest. Uh, the U.S. is going to continue to voice our support for human rights and our support for uh, the Iranian people. And I have a question about the drones and missile attacks of Iraqi Kurdistan and targeting civilian camps of Iranian Kurds over there. Personally, I visited over there a couple of times. No, any military activities over there. And what's your plan and how will be your response uh, to stop this kind of uh, attack by Iranian regime? Because it's targeting uh, Iraqi Kurdistan as your partner, the whole of Iraq, uh, and it happened a couple sure. of times. And so why I'm asking this question? Because Iraqi sky is under your control and you are a powerful country and you have a technology, you have a strong sure. and technology. So, you, so, you, so you've seen us speak to this um, a, a number of times before. And what I would say as it relates to Iran and uh, the continued uh, malign and destabilizing activities that Iran takes part in, uh, not just uh, in its uh, immediate region, but uh, in the world more broadly, we have a number of tools at our disposal uh, to continue to hold the Iranian regime accountable. And we've done that. You've seen uh, the State Department and the Treasury Department do that uh, as recently as today and as recently. statement on this very subject earlier this week in which that we strongly condemn Iran's continued missile and drone attacks against uh, the Iraqi Kurdistan region. And we call on Iran to stop these attacks and to refrain from further threats against Iraq's territorial integrity. And we stand with our partners, uh, the government of Iraq's objective to preserve the country's security, stability, and sovereignty. But your ally and your partner believe statement is not war. You should do it something. Like I said, we continue to have a number of tools at our tool belt to hold Iran accountable. I'm not going to uh, read them out from here, but we'll continue to do uh, do what is uh, in our power to hold the Iranian regime accountable. Shannon, you had your hand up. Uh, yes. Yeah, can I just follow up on Iran? Just oh, one thing. That, and then I'll come back. Um, Go ahead, Umaira. You, yeah. you just said for over two months since these protests, protests have begun, security forces have killed hundreds of peaceful protesters. I, I heard you right. Yes. Yeah. Is that, is that an independent U.S. assessment? Uh, I will see what uh, the site we have on that, but I believe that we've previously cited credible human rights uh, organizations in the region who've been operating, who've been uh, offering that statistic, but I will see if we have more specifics. Thanks. So looking ahead to further engagement with China next year with the Secretary traveling there, I wanted to ask you on the outlook of North Korea. Do you think that, or does the department think rather that China can step up and be a partner in countering North Korea as it moves toward what we anticipate will be a nuclear test and continues to fire missiles regularly? So uh, in the bilateral meeting that President Biden had with President Xi, he raised concerns about the DPRK's uh, provocative behavior and noted that all members of the international community, including the PRC, have a vested interest in encouraging 
the DPRK to act responsibly. Uh, and the PRC uh, has a, a responsibility to make clear to the DPRK uh, that <coughs> Pyongyang should not engage in unlawful and destabilizing nuclear or ballistic missile tests. Uh, President Biden raised that directly. Uh, and we continue to be uh, open to engaging with the PRC to manage the threat posed by the DPRK, uh, not just in the region, but the threat that they pose more broadly. Uh, our belief continues to be that we must limit the DPRK's ability to advance its unlawful ballistic missiles program and its weapons of mass destruction program. Uh, and our goal uh, continues to be quite clearly the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Uh, and we remain prepared to be engaged in sustained dialogue and serious diplomacy uh, towards making that pro progress, whether that be uh, with the PRC or other partners in the region, like our partners in the Republic of Korea and Japan, who have also, we've been engaging quite closely on this. Um, so go ahead. Yes, my question is on Mexico. Sure. Uh, last Sunday, hundreds of thousands of Mexicans participated in massive pro-democracy demonstrations across the country in defense of the independent electoral institute. What is the State Department's position regarding these demonstrations? Thanks for your question. So we are aware of the uh, don't touch the uh, National Electoral Institute protests uh, throughout Mexico that took place this past weekend, as you mentioned. Uh, and our viewpoint is this, is that independent institutions free of political influence uh, are a cornerstone of democracy and nonpartisan electoral institutions in particular uh, ensure that all voices are heard in fundamental democratic processes. But I don't have anything uh, other specific to offer. Can follow up on, on, the, on the same note, Senator Bob Menendez, the president of the Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate, said this week that he expects that the Biden administration will ramp up its efforts to support Mexico's democratic institutions. What is your reaction to this and to the senator's concerns? Uh, I don't have any specific actions to, to preview or uh, to share that are uh, coming down the pike. What I would say is that uh, Mexico uh, is an important uh, regional partner uh, uh, on a number of issues. Uh, but as again, as it relates to these, these protests, we're aware of them. And, and our viewpoint is that independent institutions uh, that are free of political influence are a, a cornerstone to, to democracy. Well, but I don't have any to offer. The same concerns, right? Uh, I, again, I, I, I've not seen the senator's comments, and I don't want to get ahead of any uh, potential uh, American action or anything like that. Go ahead in the back. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, him, then I will uh, uh, him. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, John Zewadi from Airway News TV. Um, former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan finally backed out uh, of his allegations of the United States. In his uh, recent interview, he said he no longer blamed the U.S. administration for removing him from power. What are your thoughts on this? So the, let's take a little bit of a step back. The U.S. values our longstanding cooperation with Pakistan and has always viewed a prosperous and democratic Pakistan as critical to U.S. interests. That remains unchanged. Uh, and we don't have a position on one political candidate of a party versus another. We support peaceful upholding of democratic constitutional and legal principles. And ultimately, we will not let propaganda, misinformation, and disinformation get in the way of any bilateral relationship, including our valued bilateral partner uh, with Pakistan. But, but what do you say about his recent statement? Like, he's like, he, he backed out. Uh, I, as we've previously said, there uh, has there is not and there has never been a truth to these allegations, but I don't have anything uh, additional to offer. So in that interview, he also termed his Moscow visit as embarrassment. He said that it was embarrassing to visit Moscow on the day of the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Earlier, the statesmen were totally different. Uh, he was saying that it was in the national interest of Pakistan. That's why he visited Moscow. So again, he's backing out his previous statements. So any thoughts, your comment? I really don't have anything uh, uh, else to offer on, on foreign minister or, or former Prime Minister Khan's uh, comments. So his recent statements suggest that he's trying to reconnect with the United States. Uh, and uh, is there any recent contact uh, with prior, prior, former Prime Minister Imran Khan or his uh, party members? Because there were rumors that uh, ambassador, U.S. ambassador in Islamabad met with the leadership uh, with this party leadership in Slava. I don't have any specific meetings or calls to read out, but uh, to the to the front part of your question, again, uh, the U.S. values our longstanding cooperation 
uh, with Pakistan and has always viewed uh, prosperous and democratic Pakistan as critical uh, to our interests, not just in the region, but also uh, the world more broadly. So one last question. So the UN session, uh, there was voting in UN, United States General Assembly and your close partner, India, uh, was absent. Uh, Apart from India, there were like total 75 countries, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Brazil, Egypt, Indonesia, even Israel, Nepal, Pakistan, South Africa, Sri Lanka were absent from the voting. I mean, what's the reason uh, United States not able to get these countries uh, to vote against Russia? I will let our, uh, our, our mission in, in New York speak uh, in more in detail about um, any potential resolution vote. Uh, but what I'll say th is this, is that since the first days of Russia's unjustified and barbaric uh, and unprovoked war against Ukraine, we have had uh, continuous communications with our Indian counterparts about what we can do together to hold Russia accountable and to impose consequences for its brutal war. Uh, the secretary had the opportunity to uh, host uh, external affairs minister Jai Shankar here uh, a number of months ago. They also uh, had a bilateral engagement on the margins of the uh, ASEAN summit as well. Uh, and although we may sometimes vary on our policy approaches, we, uh, the United States and India, share a commitment to upholding uh, the rule-based international order that respects territorial integrity and sovereignty. Go ahead. Uh Back to Poland and Ukraine, sure. uh, did Ukraine offer you through diplomatic channels anything to back uh, the claims by President Zelensky that it was a Russian missile? I don't have any uh, other specific details to offer from uh, readouts of calls that we've had with our Ukrainian partners. Uh, I will again reiterate what I've said to your colleagues in the room, which is that we are aware of these comments, but ultimately, as we've said before, uh, we don't have any information to contradict uh, Poland's preliminary findings. But again, I think the important thing to remember here is that uh, these actions, uh, these follow-on actions, are all a result of Russia's unjust and barbaric war in Ukraine, and specifically uh, these uh, the events in Poland uh, are a result of, of Russia's barrage of missiles on Ukraine, on Ukrainian territory, uh, with a direct attempt to uh, hit uh, civilian uh, infrastructure, energy infrastructure, which uh, is uh, appalling. Uh, we condemn it, and uh, just another uh, another example of, of Russia's barbaric actions. What is the U.S. engagement in the investigation on the ground in Poland, and also are there any measures that could be undertaken to prevent such accidents in the future if that was an accident? So uh, I'm just not going to get ahead of the work that is ongoing as it relates to the investigation. We remain in close touch with our Polish counterparts. As you saw, President Biden uh, spoke to this yesterday. Uh, he, uh, as the United States, agreed to offer our support. Uh, these processes are ongoing, and we continue to remain in close touch with our uh, Polish and NATO partners as well. Do you know what agencies are helping Poland? Again, I'm just not going to get ahead of the, this ongoing investigation. And uh, as we have said, and as our colleagues at the uh, National Security have said, we'll continue to assess and share uh, any new information transparently as it comes to light. Let, let me go to Shannon and I'll work through. You got a couple of questions already, Alex. Go ahead. President Zelensky saying that Ukraine should be allowed to participate in that ongoing election. Is that something the U.S. would support? You mean ongoing uh, investigation? Yeah, ongoing investigation. So uh, I, I will let our, our Polish smart partners speak specifically to um, the ins and outs of what's happening specifically on the ground. But again, what I will say is that we do not want to get ahead of this work and we uh, remain in close touch with our Polish partners, of course, our Ukrainian partners uh, and NATO uh, as well as uh, this process continues to uh, unfold. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. I would like to follow up on the bilats today uh, between uh, President Biden, uh, Secretary Blinken, and uh, Rishi Sunak. Um, so does the U.S. trust uh, Rishi Sunak to resolve the Northern Ireland Protocol issue with the EU? And is, would you say that there is now a better understanding of the U.K. perspective on the issue? So I, I don't have any uh, uh, specifics to offer about uh, that bilateral meeting beyond uh, the readout that the White House offered. But what I can say is that the U.S. Uh, is grateful for the extraordinary collaboration that we have with our ally, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, particularly as we work together hand in hand 
who address a number of issues uh, and a number of areas of common interest. And that uh, partnership uh, and that collaboration, uh, of course, uh, transcends um, uh, any one particular uh, government in the United Kingdom. Uh, I know that uh, President Biden had the opportunity to speak to Prime Minister Sunak when uh, his uh, government was first formed. I know that uh, they were uh, pleased to be able to meet in person on the, the margins of the G20. Uh, and Secretary Blinken himself has had a number of uh, direct engagements with his counterpart, uh, Foreign Secretary James Cleverly, uh, at a number of instances as well. And this is a, a relationship we're, we're incredibly grateful for. Jenny. On Haiti, uh, the convoy was attacked the other day. Has the U.S. attributed who was behind that attack? Uh, we don't have any uh, additional updates to offer beyond what we uh, read out when this event took place. But uh, just to, 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 to reiterate some of that information again, uh, on November 14th, armed individuals fired shots at a convoy that was uh, made up of Haitian National Police vehicles, U.S. Embassy vehicles, Haitian commercial vehicles uh, during the morning. No embassy personnel were injured uh, and don't have additional information uh, beyond that at this time. And is uh, the U.S. any closer to finding a nation to lead this potential task force to Haiti under the auspices of the U.N.? This uh, work continues to be ongoing, uh, and uh, we continue to work directly with not just our uh, the, the government of Haiti, but also uh, other allies and partners as well. I mean, as you saw, uh, last week, uh, through actions from the Treasury Department and the State Department, uh, we have continued to hold those accountable who uh, have uh, been the cause for some of the humanitarian suffering that we're seeing in Haiti. Uh, as you know, a U.S.-Canada joint operation uh, played a role in delivering vital security-related equipment. Uh, that equipment specifically played an integral role in the Haitian National Police's ability to end uh, gang coalition control of the Vero fuel terminal, uh, which took place last week. You saw the secretary uh, speak a little bit about this in Munster. Uh, and so these uh, work, this work and our efforts to support Haiti are ongoing and we continue to engage uh, 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 through bilateral relationships that we have, but also in multilateral fora on um, steps forward. Uh, go ahead, Alex. Thanks, ma'am. My Ukraine question actually has been addressed. She turned to the South Caucasus, if you don't mind. Okay. Can you for me on Ambassador Nikos upcoming trip to the region? He's going to go there next week, as he says. Uh, I'm not uh, aware of specific travel for Ambassador Riker, Alex, but I can uh, check with the Bureau and see if we can get back and to you and have any mention Thanks so much. Thanks yeah. the Secretary's phone call to Baku and Yerma uh, last two days. He urged the sites to schedule further talks as uh, agreed in Washington. Uh, do you know at what level uh, he wants the sites to meet next time and also is there any deadline? Uh, I don't know if there's uh, any deadline. What I will say is that the Secretary's continued engagement on this is a, you know, direct uh, a result of the United States' commitment to promoting a peaceful future for uh, the South Caucasus region. Uh, I don't think I have anything more to offer beyond those readouts, but this is something that, of course, this uh, entire building and Secretary Blinken are paying close attention to, and ultimately, uh, we believe that direct dialogue is key to resolving this issue, uh, and it's why we continue to uh, remain very deeply engaged on this. So Turkey, uh, Turkey is pushing uh, Russia and Ukraine um, uh, to, for peace talks, like uh, trying to mediate them, are you on the uh, on the table to like is the United States also the part of the negotiations? Well, you have seen even uh, President Zelensky uh, speak to the fact that uh, uh, an end to this conflict will likely need to come through uh, discussion and diplomacy and negotiations. But uh, we have yet to see. Uh, any kind of concerted effort uh, from the Russian Federation to do that. And so in the interim, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to support our Ukrainian partners through the many of the uh, lines of efforts that I spoke about early, continuing to offer security assistance, continuing to offer humanitarian assistance, continuing with our allies and partners to hold the Russian Federation accountable through sanctions, through export controls, through other measures. Um, and uh, any effort uh, about this should not uh, take place without Ukraine. And our, our belief continues to be uh, nothing about Ukraine uh, without Ukraine when it comes to Russia's 
brutal uh, invasion uh, that continues to be ongoing. If I may, one more question on this one. Uh, the the role ahead. of CST or Collective Security Twitter Organization, is there any assessment on your end that how much it is involved in Russia's you know, supplying, supplying you know, its missiles and other arms that they're using in Ukraine? I'm asking because Putin is planning to go to Yerevan next week to attend the summit of the CST. Uh, I'm not going to uh, speculate, Alex, or get into uh, a, a hypothetical here, but what I would just say again is that uh, it is Russia that is infringing on the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine, uh, and that uh, Russia could end this war uh, by leaving Ukraine, uh, uh, but if Ukraine did not stop fighting, uh, Ukraine would end. And so, again, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to support our Ukrainian partners through uh, a number of lines of efforts that uh, I just spoke about. So have you been in touch with the CSTO members and urging them to refrain from helping Russia? Uh, I, I'm not uh, aware of specific uh, calls uh, to offer, but uh, we have been quite clear that uh, any country uh, that uh, that it would be deeply problematic uh, for any country to play a role in uh, assisting Russia uh, as it uh, takes part in its unjust and barbaric uh, invasion and brutal attacks uh, in Ukraine. Just one country. thing, Vedant. Um, so the Polish president said both Poland and U.S. would have to agree for Ukraine to take part in the investigation into the whole um, missile uh, incident. Um, given that there's such discrepancy between you guys and what Ukraine is saying, um, does the United States want to give Ukraine access so that they can take a look at the uh, the wreckage or do their own investigation? I don't. I don't have any uh, specifics to offer about uh, our our role in the investigation beyond uh, uh, President Biden saying that we have, of course, uh, agreed to offer support. Uh, but I'm happy to check to see if we can we have anything and additional do, to offer. Do you know which part of the U.S. government has taken part in these investigations and which part needs to approve Ukraine's potential uh, involvement? Uh, again, I just don't have any uh, other specifics to offer on this right now. Do you have uh, any updates on Brittany Griner's whereabouts? Uh, I don't have an update on this beyond what uh, I addressed earlier in the week. So you don't know which penal colony she's been sent to? So uh, we continued, we through our lawyers uh, are aware of her uh, location and are in frequent contact with Ms. Griner's legal team, but uh, formally the Russian Federation has still failed to provide any official notification for such a move of a U.S. citizen, which uh, we strongly protest. Uh, our embassy and our mission in Moscow has continued to press for more information about her transfer and her current location, and uh, those requests continue to be ongoing. Has anyone from the embassy been able to speak with her since she was relocated? Uh, not to my understanding. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.